I love to read. Like I really, really love to read. I think it is so much fun. And I've loved to read since I was a kid because my parents did a good job of making reading fun. So I wanted to read. When I got in the classroom and realized that a lot of kids didn't like to read, like a lot of kids don't like to read, it made me really, really sad. But I knew there was a way we could fix it. So over the past few years, I have really worked on trying to find fun ways to incorporate books into my elementary music class so that students will be more interested in reading. Now I happen to be filming this video in 2020. So, um, things are a little different right now than normal. Typically we would be already back to school for a few weeks, but instead I'm sitting at home, um, doing a virtual open house. Not right the second, obviously, because I'm talking to you, but I was doing that earlier. So things are a little bit weird. If you told me a year ago that I would be teaching virtually or that when we go back, we probably can't touch the kids, I would have thought you were crazy. But if you are in one of those two boats, then this is the perfect video for you because when it comes to not <laughs> singing, not doing anything that involves touching, um, one of the easiest things you can do to teach elementary music to your kids in a fun way is using books. So books are going to be really hot commodities this year, even more than normal in elementary music spheres. So we're going to go through a bunch of my favorite lessons. Now, these are things that I already did before all the craziness happened. So if you happen to be watching this in the future and you're like, what the heck is this lady talking about? Then it's okay because you can use these as well. These are like my all time favorite books and I am so excited to share them with you. Now, I will admit as I was writing this, I because I make my, most of my videos start as blog posts and then I make videos and I also am ripping the audio to make a podcast which is coming out soon. When I was writing the original blog post, I was typing and typing and I just kept thinking like, oh, in that one, oh, and I gotta talk about that one, oh, and I gotta talk about that one. So at some point I was like, we just gotta stop. So there are many books that I love that I didn't put on this list and there are many books that I'm sure you love that are not on here as well, but I did as many as I could. In order to make sure this video is not extremely long, then we're gonna just go ahead and get started. All right, so the first one is Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You See? by Eric Carle. I use this book with students from K to second grade and we use a singing game along with it. The way that we use this book is we read through the book first and then I sing it on Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. So we sing, brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? I see a red bird looking at me. And then we go to the next animal, red bird, red bird, what do you see? And so on and so forth. After we sing it, then we get to play a game. What we do is we sit in a circle and everyone gets a stuffed animal. If you don't have stuffed animals, you can print out pictures from the internet or I will link below the TPT activity that I have that goes along with this that has this in the directions and the PowerPoint and it has printable animals with like the names on them. You can get those there. And so everyone gets an animal, whether it's a card or a stuffed animal and we all sit in a circle. Whoever has the brown bear is gonna go first. So what's gonna happen is everybody's gonna sing Brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? And whoever's holding the brown bear looks around the room and they pick somebody else's animal to sing to. So if I see like a lion, then I'm gonna sing, I see a lion looking at me by myself. Then everybody sings, lion, lion, what do you see? and whoever's holding the lion sings to somebody else in the room. So this continues until everyone's been called. I usually have kids put their animal in the middle or set them down on the floor to indicate, I've already had a turn, I don't need another one. It is super, super fun. I do use it all the way from kindergarten to second grade because we love it and oftentimes use it twice a year because it's so much fun. Plus you get to assess singing voices. So it's got that added bonus of assessment without feeling like it's and it says, the next one goes along with that. And that is Polar Bear, Polar Bear, What Do You Hear? And this is also by Eric Carl and Bill Martin Jr. So what we do with this one is after we do Brown Bear, maybe the next week, maybe 
the same day, we'll read through this book. And it has a lot of different animals. So it has like a polar bear and it has a lion and it has a hippopotamus and different animals like that. So we read through this and then since it's talking all about hearing, I find some animal sounds. I usually use iTunes. I have the Apple Music subscription, which I highly recommend. It's $10 a month, but you get access to literally every song there is on Apple, which is amazing for elementary music teachers because you never know what I mean. I use that. You could also probably look them up on YouTube and we listen to the sounds that we try to guess what animals they are. Super silly and super fun. The next book is Chicka Chicka Boom Boom. Now this book has a special, special place in my heart because it was my favorite when I was a kid. I just, I just loved it and it was so much fun and I still get to use it now. It is by Bill Martin Jr. as well. Apparently I just got a thing for him. With Chicka Chicka Boom Boom, typically what I do is I'll have kids keep the steady beat as we read through the book. Then I pull out some of the most important parts of the book, like Chicka Chicka Boom Boom, and we figure out what the rhythm would be. So it's either Titi or Tom. They're very, very simple. I have this, I will link below video and blog post that has this in it if you want more detailed explanations. Then I typically use castanets or drums or something like that. If you're in a six feet away situation, obviously don't do that, just use hands. But when we get to those sections of the book, I say it and I clap it with my castanet and then they get to say it and clap it with their castanet. So for example, chicka chicka boom boom is one of those phrases that we sing, that we play. So when I get to that part, I will pick up mine and say chicka chicka boom boom and they do chicka chicka boom boom. And then will there be enough room? Will there be enough room? And then we put it down and we keep going with the book. Super simple and super fun. I also have some printable worksheets that go along with this book and a digital version if you are online. So I will link all those things down below. The next one is really simple and that is Celia Cruz, Queen of Salsa. I love to teach salsa to my kids because I feel like it's a very well known but also very approachable style of Hispanic music. So we often do salsa and salsa dancing in my class. I will link down below the lesson that I use. It is not mine, but it's really good and really fun. And there's some videos in there that show you how to do it. So when we learn about salsa, we like to read Celia Cruz, Queen of Salsa. This book is great for about third grade because it's a little bit long for second grade, way too long for first grade. But it's really good and tells all about Celia Cruz who was an awesome salsa singer. The next one is, I know a shy fellow who swallowed a cello. Now I have a video and a blog post and a TPT product and a Google Slides TPT product all about I know a shy fellow who swallowed a cello because it's probably my favorite one ever. It is written by Barbara S. Gariel, Gariel? real I don't know and illustrated by John O'Brien and it is so cute so it follows the same figure as the there was an old lady who swallowed a fly but with musical instruments so he swallows all these different musical instruments and it is so silly how I use this book is I typically do it in third grade and we'll read through the book and there's a few different things we do. So we'll read through the book. Sometimes we sing through the book. We also will do hand motions, especially sometimes we'll do it with second grade with the hand motions to really emphasize like what the instruments are. So we'll do like, there was a shy fellow who swallowed a cello. I don't know why he swallowed a cello. I have a video about it. I'll link down below uh, so you can see it a little bit better. And so we go through and do that. Then, we learn about instrument families for the first time. And so we sort them into the four instrument families. So we read through and with each instrument, we figure out what family goes to. So like when he swallows the cello, we say, okay, what instrument family would the cello be in? Oh, the string family, cool. Well, that's the next one. Then we read the next one just after each verse, we stop and I ask what instrument family it would be in. And I usually use like a poster on the board and have kids go and put it up on the board or they can draw or write it on a piece of paper. So lots of different options. I will link that down below. Super, super fun, super, super silly. Highly recommend the book. It's one of my all time favorites. The next book is called Cuckoo. And this book is really fun because it's in Spanish and in English. So if you have lots of Spanish speakers, really fun for that. I personally don't, but I like to teach Hispanic music anyway, because I think it's really relevant and I try to do lots of different cultures. And so love this. So how I use this is we sing the cuckoo song, which is a folk song. It's very simple, just so in me. And it goes like this. Cuckoo, cuckoo, who are you? I'm a bird. Do you sing? Yes, I do. 
to sing then coo -coo. and it is a back and forth song so it's supposed to be two people having a conversation so i teach the kids this song we do it with someone holding the bird and they get to be the cuckoo so like i would sing cuckoo and they sing cuckoo and we go through the whole song goes back and forth i will link it down below so that you can check all of that out but then i pull out the cuckoo book and we read through this book and every time it says the word cuckoo i sing it on so me so and then the kids echo it so anytime we get there i sing it and they echo so it might be like this all day long coo, 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 flew and sang and then i will just continue so really easy way to get the kids more engaged into the book because they have to pay attention the whole time because they have to know when it's time to sing so this book's talking all about how the cuckoo bird is so pretty so i have them draw a picture of like the prettiest bird ever and it's just a really fun little extension the next book is i know an old mermaid who swallowed a shark i love this book it's so much fun and super silly it's again i'm I love all the old lady books, but this one is probably one of my favorites. I typically use this book at the beginning of third grade and we use it to review half notes. So what we do is we read through the book. Each section, when the old mermaid swallows something, we will stop and we'll sort what she swallowed by the syllables in its name. So the first one is shark. So when we sort that, it'll be a half note. So we'll sort out the rhythms and it'll be a half note. So then we have squid. That would also be a half note. And then tropical fish would be four quarter notes. So little things like that, it's just really fun. We also do actions because actions make everything better. So for example, we'll say like, there was an old mermaid who swallowed a squid. That's what she did, she swallowed a squid. She swallowed the squid to float with the shark. I don't know why she swallowed the shark, but it left no mark. So just really silly, simple things like that. I have a video and some TVT products about that one down below too. I told you, these are my all time favorite books, which is why I have so many things i already have blog posts talking all about them so i will link everything down below the next one is the only one i don't have in front of me but it's also very simple so it is what a wonderful world and i like to use this one when we learn about jazz in the spring usually during april because april is jazz month and we talk about louis armstrong and we listen to the song and we read the book and we just talk about what a wonderful world would look like super simple super easy and perfect for distance learning. Last one for today, again, I could go on and on and on, but I will control myself, is Giraffes Can't Dance. This book is super cute. It is by Giles Andre and Guy Parker Reese. I hope I said that correctly. And it is so cute. It's about a giraffe who thinks that he can't dance, but it turns out he just didn't have the right music to dance to so it's a really good message i love it at the beginning of the year it gives confidence to those kids who are maybe scared to dance or move or do all the things that we do in music class so we read through the book and then afterwards what we do is i put pictures of animals up on the screen and we move like those animals so i might put like a cat and so we'll crawl around like a cat and then i'll put like an elephant and so we walk around like an elephant with a you know trunk and it just things like that and it's just super silly and super 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 fun so good for like k and one super cute super silly i then like to do um, some zoo animal rhythm sorts so i have like printable versions and also google slides and google form versions i'll link those below again and so we sort the animal names by the rhythms just like in the there was an old mermaid who swallowed a shark and that one comes in lots of different levels so you could use it with anyone from kindergarten to fifth grade or even higher because level four is like rhythms i don't teach my kids it's like triplets and um dotted eighth sixteenth notes and I don't usually get that far honestly but if you do I've got some stuff for you <laughs> all right so those are all of the ones that I have here on this list like I mentioned I could go on and on but I have to stop somewhere, so I'm going to stop here. Thank you so much for watching. I would love to know what your favorite book is down in the comment section. So definitely leave that in the comment section. And make sure you hit that subscribe button if you are on YouTube. And I will see you next time. Have a wonderful, wonderful week.